Welcome back for another PyTorch video. In this video, we want to go through how you load a model in PyTorch and how to modify it to use it on other types of data than it was trained on. We're also going to look at how you do fine tuning in PyTorch, uh, which if you're not familiar is when you freeze uh, the weights uh, up to some point and you only train the last couple of layers. So here in the code, I've got a simple PyTorch uh, code defining all of the imports. Um, some loading of the data, loss and optimizer, and some uh, simple training of the network. Um, if you're not familiar with this, then check out the CNN video I did, which is the same code. But really what we're going to try to focus on is how to load the pre-trained model. PyTorch has some models that we can very easily import, like VGG, Inception, ResNet, etc. So let's say that we pick VGG16, uh, the network that we've also implemented from scratch in a previous video. Let's load the pre-trained model and look how you modify it. So you would do model equals torch vision dot models dot VGG16 and pre-trained equals true. Then let's say we print the model and so the simple case now is like if you would have the exact same data set the model was trained on, then you're good to go. You can just uh, have the model and, and run it exactly as it is. But realistically, you're going to run it on some other type of data set. Like in this case, we have the Cypher 10 data set. Then we would need to modify uh, the model. So for example, what we would have to check first is that uh, it wouldn't cause any errors with the dimensions. Because, for example, the VGG16 has a couple of max pooling layers. Um, in this case, I've checked. Uh, and the, after all the comm layers, the output here is going to be a one by one uh, using the Cypher 10 data set. So what we would have to change uh, in this model is the average pooling and also Cypher 10 has 10 classes. So we would have to modify the classifier to have our features uh, 10. So let's say now we want to do, we would like to erase this average pooling because as I said, the output will be one by one. So there's no need to do the average pooling. So let's say we want to remove this one and we also want to change the classifier to only output 10 features. Uh, one way we can do this is by creating a class, which is just an identity class. Essentially, we're going to replace the average pooling with something that just lets the, um, the input flow as exactly as it is. So just an identity mapping. We're going to call init uh, super self uh, and init. And then in the forward, so very simply, we're just going to return x. So ex do nothing. Then how to modify this, we want to do model dot average pool equals identity. And if we would have several here, you would do um, zero or one. Uh, in this case, we only have a single one. Now we change the entire thing to just identity. Let's also say that we would like to change the model dot classifier. And let's say that we would do nn dot linear uh, and do the input in this case would be a 512 since the number of kernels or the filters from the VGG is 512 and counting with the cipher 10 it would be one by one so we would have 512 to 10 and now I'll print the model again So as we see now, we don't have the average pooling and we have changed the classifier. Uh, if you would change, so for a specific in the classifier, you would do like this, for example. Um, so that would only change the, the, the first one right here, right? So these would still be there. Uh, then you would have to uh, change all of these ones to identity. For example, you could do for i in range uh, 1 to... Uh, not inclusive the six so we would do model dot classifier i to be identity 
we'll do something like this. Or in this case, we could just do model.classifier equals and then dot linear, since we only want to have a single uh, layer, let's say. Um, you could also do nn.sequential, and you could do like 100 and another nn linear to 10, meaning you would have um, two linear layers, and you could do whatever you want in between, and then drop out something like that. But let's say we want to keep it simple. We just want to have a single linear layer uh, like this. And we can remove the sequential part. Now, if we want to run this, let's just do model to device and let's remove these exits. And now let it train for a couple of epochs and see where it comes where the, with the pre-training. Not having the pre-trained model gives us an accuracy of 53%. So here we can really see how transfer learning and having a pre-trained model really, really helps. One thing that's usually used is that now we're using backprop on all of the layers, all of the weights. Usually, we would only have uh, a couple of last layers. We would freeze all the weights up to a particular point and then use backprop only on those last few layers. So let's see how to uh, do that. One way we could do that is we could do, so let's say, change this to pretrain equals true. We could do for param in model dot parameters. We could do param that requires grad equals false, uh, and this will make it so that it doesn't change um, the weights of the layers all up to that point. So now that would be the entire model it wouldn't use backprop, so it wouldn't learn anything. But here we change the model, so we use a couple of last layers. In this case, only a single one, but we could perhaps add an end dot linear one hundred and uh, then and then dot relu and and then dot linear 100 to to 10 like this and then we would send it to uh, CUDA if it's available and now it would only actually train those last last layers uh, which makes training a lot faster than training the entire network so that's fine-tuning let's see how it works if we run this Training on only those last two linear layers, we got an accuracy of about 63%, which is worse than training on the entire model, where we got 89%, I believe. Uh, but the pro here is training goes a lot faster. Um, and so if you have a model that you're not able to import in PyTorch, like in this case, we could just do models.vg16, then what you would need to do is you would have to implement that model and download the weight and then to load the weights, you would use what we did in the last video uh, where we loaded a checkpoint. So in this video, we went through an example of how to use transfer learning and modifying the network to fit to a particular data set. Uh, hopefully this was clear. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comment section below. And thank you very so much for watching the video.